Hello and welcome to Future Self Dreaming. My name is Carlos Kukulkan. In today's presentation, as part of this ongoing series about the social dynamics of intersexual relating, I want to give some context and definition to the term hypergamy. Most people have not heard of the concept of hypergamy, and yet, when it's explained, anyone with some life experience can obviously recognize what it is and will have a multitude of examples to draw upon. When I studied counseling at university, I became very interested in intersexual social dynamics and how these may adversely affect men in particular. When I was introduced to the work of Rollo Tomasi and his Rational Male book series, a lot of elements of understanding the issues related specifically to men fell into place. Understanding these factors, however, won't be realized by studying at university, largely because of the politically correct environment that is fostered within these institutions, which is unlikely to acknowledge the social dynamics found within the likes of Rollo's work. There is often backlash when highlighting the distinct characteristics that are particular to female nature, particularly when some of these traits and characteristics may not be so desirable. Regardless, the biology and related body chemistry between men and women is vastly different, resulting in differing behaviour, and from my perspective, it behooves men to have a good understanding of female nature for their own well-being as they relate and interact with the opposite sex throughout their lifetime. When studying psychology at an academic institution, pretty much the only reference to the term hypergamy might be found within the social sciences as the tendency for women to marry up to a spouse who is of a higher, higher caste or social status than themselves. Hypergamy is much more than this, however, and is the sexual selection strategy that is specific to female nature and not found in men. Hypergamy stems from a woman's inherent biological motivation to reproduce with not only the best physical genes that may be available to her, but also potentially with a man who will invest his skills and resources into her and her offspring. These are ancient biological urges and drives that are wired into the female psyche and have ensured the survival of the species. The masculine qualities that are attractive to women also have their roots deeply embedded in biology and this reproductive requirement. The types of characteristics that women generally find attractive in men include status, power, being a leader of men, risk-taking, having resources which in this day and age can be equated with financial wealth, a sense of humour and physical stature, which includes height, musculature, broad shoulders, strong jawline. All of these attributes are what, what might be considered alpha male qualities. Part of the red pill awareness presented in Rollo Tomasi's Rational Male series is recognising that this tendency for women to be drawn to alpha male qualities is part of the hypergamous female sexual strategy and the feminine imperative to sexually select a male partner due to their genetic attributes in the short term and their perceived worth and value to them in the long term for parental provisioning and providing. An element of female sexuality that Rollo highlights in his Rational Male book series is what is referred to as women's sexual pluralism. This term refers to the duplicitous short-term and long-term breeding strategies that women have that are found not only at various stages in their sexual lifespan, but also across the monthly ovulatory cycle. The short-term strategies are what motivate sexual arousal towards impulsive, sensually gratifying hot sex with a perceived alpha male. The long-term strategies employ more prudence, discernment, familiarity and comfort. In an ideal scenario, the first strategy preempts the second, whereby a woman finds the alpha male sexually arousing and this may lead to an opportunity to, uh, to develop a long-term relationship that provides the stability necessary for child rearing. The short-term female strategy for hot, impulsive sex is obviously found during the younger, sexually fertile stage of a woman's life. However, it's also more intense during the ovulatory stage of the monthly cycle when women are hornier and more aroused. The long-term strategy takes priority as women get older and their competitive edge in the sexual marketplace decreases, leading to more desire to settle down into a stable long-term relationship. The desire for comfort and less impulsivity is also found during the stage in the monthly cycle closer to menstruation, away from ovulation. 
Within the red-pilled manosphere, there are some crass axioms. Um, some of these that get thrown around that describe women's sexual pluralism are such as alpha fucks and beta bucks or alpha seed and beta need. And these statements describe women's genetic chemical attraction to breed with an alpha male, as well as the requirement for provisioning to raise the offspring. Any man who has been in a relationship with a woman soon finds that she will either be attempting to balance the two needs for alpha and beta masculine qualities in the one man, wanting him to display the alpha male qualities that she desires for sexual arousal, as well as the comfort and provisioning required for the long-term strategy. Women's sexuality is cyclical. It changes across the course of her monthly cycle, whilst men's sexuality is basically on and ready to go at all times, ready for an opportunity when one may present itself to fulfill the sexual biological urge. This is largely determined by testosterone levels that are naturally much higher in men and that fluctuate in women during their monthly cycle. When understood, these factors are obvious and should be considered in why male and female sexual desire within a long-term, committed, monogamous relationship may at times be at odds with one another. As Rollo explains, for one person's sexual strategy to succeed, the other partner must relinquish their own. A misunderstanding that many men make is the idea that attempting to fulfill the feminine long-term sexual strategy that desires comfort is something that will lead to sexual arousal, thinking that if they develop a friendly connection with a woman, that this will potentially lead to sex. As I'll discuss in future presentations, this is a mistake that can lead to untold sexual and emotional torment and suffering that men experience when being placed in the friend zone that they need to learn to exit from. From my perspective, elements of feminist social conditioning indoctrinate susceptible people to live in a victim mentality whereby they believe that they're being oppressed by a violent patriarchy, and this is all part of a vast sexual power game. Firstly, there is a healthy form of patriarchy with positive masculine leadership rather than violent dominance, and what most people invested in the delusional idea of a violent patriarchy fail to recognize is what creates this perceived hierarchy which is female sexual selectivity. The top 20% of men are given the reproductive opportunities by the vast majority of women, as these men compete to stand out from the crowd to gain access to these reproductive opportunities, whilst many men don't even get a look in. It is this competition for reproductive opportunity that largely drives male achievement. Although, from a counselling perspective, I would obviously suggest that it is important for the well-being of all human beings, regardless of gender or race, to develop a healthy sense of themselves, to value themselves and what they may have to contribute to the world. But the topic that I'm talking and highlighting in the context of this presentation is what is of value within the sexual marketplace, and this can be distilled down to a few key biological elements. Women's obsession with their physical appearance, youth and beauty is due to their inherent understanding that this is their most valuable commodity within the sexual marketplace, as it conveys their fertility and capacity to bear offspring. Within the sexual marketplace, a woman's sexuality is what is of value and utilized to attract a potential partner. We all acquire different physical traits in the genetic lottery and need to play the hand that we're dealt. Although we may be able to enhance various components of our physical appearance and attractiveness to some degree via working out or the use of makeup or surgery, there is no fairness or equality in the genetic lottery, with some people simply being afforded various privileges and options to them, not due to intelligence or hard work, but due to their attractiveness. And nowhere is this more obvious than the attention that is given to very attractive women. Whether people like the concept or not, or want to admit it to themselves, facts are that women will use their sexuality to acquire resources, whether this be by using it to attract a potential long-term partner who will invest themselves in providing to a potential family, or having multiple men around who will do chores for them in the hope of sexual sexual reward, or for short-term gain in the most crass version by prostituting themselves or gold digging in one capacity or another. This can be hard for men to accept, and what many men often fail to understand is that romantic notions of love are as delusional as the addictive experience of sexual passion brought about due to primal chemical attraction. 
and that these are pitfalls to recognizing that within the sexual marketplace, women generally value men for what they can provide them with. However, this is not what drives a woman's sexual arousal. In the same way, it may be a bitter pill to swallow, recognizing that within the sexual marketplace, a woman's value is largely based on her youth, beauty, and fertility, a man's value to women is largely attributed to his ability to produce, provide, and protect. And if men do not recognize and acknowledge this, it is ultimately likely to be of detriment to them in the long term. As always, I hope this material may provide something of value to you. For more information on counseling sessions, you can explore the website, futureselfdreaming.com, and follow Future Self Dreaming on Facebook and Instagram. In Lakesh.